things over to Eric Baldeschweiler, CTO of Hortonworks, where he's actually going to um, cover Hadoop now, next, and beyond and give you a feel for where the open source technologies are headed. So, Eric? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi. Wow, there's a lot of you here today. Um, so on the point of continuity, uh, back in 2006 uh, at Yahoo, we were kind of looking at the big data problem and said, we have a lot of assets, let's put some of them together and let's really swing for the fences and do something big. So Doug Cutting had this thing in Nutch that we put into uh, what became the Hadoop project and then we had a team that had been building web search big data applications. And so we started putting those together and that's what made the first Hadoop team at Yahoo. And we invested, invested, 2008 came along, and there were 200 people at the first Hadoop summit. Right? I've been giving these talks at the summits for every one of them, so it was a lot smaller back then. We were in the tech market. So 200 people, a few years later, last year we had 1,600 people, now we got 2,200 people. So this thing is growing really fast. Uh, it's quite the wave, so I'm very excited uh, to be up here again giving the sort of Hadoop architecture uh, update, and uh, let's just get into it. So at this point, there's really two lines of Hadoop that are being released from Apache, uh, two active lines. There's Hadoop 1.0, which is the stable line, and it is the sort of center of all the production deploys of Hadoop, pretty much all the H production uh, Hadoop deploys today. Um, it's been out since 2009, really, with 20, the core code went out. We've been stabilizing and adding a few key features since then. So GA last year, so what was 1.0, you have the most stable release of Hadoop ever. Three years of stabilization. Um, and then there's 2.0, which has also been in the works for uh, a long time. Uh, three years of engineering coming out there. So that just went alpha. Um, you know, a couple months ago. Uh, we're moving it into testing with some key accounts and partners, um, and it is really exciting. It has got an end-to-end -end rewrite of the MapReduce layer and a pretty complete rewrite of all the storage logic in the HDFS layer as well. I'll talk more about that in a minute. But there's just a sort of huge amount of community innovation and under development there, and we're very excited about what 2.0 is gonna do in the coming year or two. So key features in one, right, as I said, it's been out for about three years. There's been a few strategic features that got added to go from Hadoop 20 to Hadoop 1.0. The community decided that this was what our 1.0 release of Hadoop was based on sort of the fact that we saw this just meeting a lot of needs being enterprise ready. So what are the sort of key new features? Is the support for HBase with uh, the sync flush work this is the first release of Hadoop that supports HBase well. And putting those two communities together is obviously huge because HBase brings in a whole world of interactive applications uh, such as website personalization and many, many others. Um, security, uh, Hadoop uh, 1.0 has Kerberos-based strong authentication. This is big. It lets you do things in a sort of auditable way, which brings Hadoop into more use cases and it lets you share Hadoop clusters much more effectively since you can put data on the cluster that everyone isn't allowed to see. Um, so that's a, a big, big deal. And it's added a lot of value in terms of letting clusters be used by more people together. And then finally, MapReduce Limits, which has been a big adventure uh, for us over the last few years. Back, when 2000, back in 2009, 2010, with uh, Hadoop 20, we were kind of playing whack-a-mole, where an individual bad user could come up with a creative job that took down a Hadoop cluster. And if you're sharing hundreds of people on a single Hadoop cluster, which we were at Yahoo, uh, this is a big problem. So a lot of energy has gone into the one line to put in the MapReduce limits that just keep uh, individual users from taking down the cluster, make sure that there's a fair use of resources um, in a multi-tenant environment. So that really benefits our, again, sharing and reliability, big stuff. Whoops, wrong, oh dear. Aha, <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, 2.0. Um, 
They gave me too many buttons. Um, so uh, 2.0, as I said, is a really big update, uh, complete rewrite of MapReduce and a big update of HDFS. The kind of two core goals of this work are a focus on scalability. Uh, there's a few key users of Hadoop who are just banging their heads on 4,000 node clusters and saying this isn't nearly big enough, right? It'd be much easier if we could, in the case of, you know, either grow our primary warehouse from 4,500 nodes and to many more in the case of one user or in the case of another. They've got 4,000 node clusters everywhere. They want to put them together and share them more widely, right? Because it's easier to administer fewer clusters. So scalability is really at the center of some of this work. The other big, uh, you know, sort of addition that I think is going to impact more of the community is the kind of open API focus. Yarn is a scalable and pluggable framework. It lets you add your own compute models to Hadoop so that you don't have to stick to MapReduce. Uh, so we're really looking forward to the community you know, inventing many new ways of using Hadoop. We expect that Yarn will take Hadoop into real, near real-time applications. We think it'll really help with some of the tough machine learning algorithms in terms of the performance. You can come up with different performance models, and there's a lot of analytics use cases as well where just having these new frameworks we think will make a big difference. And also, MapReduce performance is going to be substantially increased when Yarn comes out, and again, we think this framework API is going to let people innovate and experiment and continue to drive better throughput through, um, in the new release. Uh, the HDFS, again, has very pluggable APIs. You can now have many name nodes sharing a single pool of storage, and those name nodes don't all have to run the same code. So you can have um, sort of traditional Hadoop storage, and you can also try new things, maybe data caching, maybe something that looks more like S3, lots of possibility in, to innovate there. And finally, there's this kind of focus on always on, right? Uh, it, a Hadoop cluster can be used in a lot more use cases if it doesn't have downtime. That's a big deal. So there's a whole series of changes, some of them complete, some of them underway, that have a focus on really keeping your clusters up 24 by 7. That includes the compatibility protocol buffer changes that are in. Um, it includes uh, the uh, HA work that is in progress going very well. And it includes uh, things like a framework for rolling upgrades that is got, you know, that is under development and people are talking about and thinking about. All right. Um, so that's the innovation and the stability. You see the two lines of code. And the challenge is, is that we need both of them, absolutely, right? There's shops that are just, like I said, they've got 4,000 node clusters and they want to grow them bigger. So innovate, go faster. So that's what Apache is great at. Ship early, ship often, just keep coming up with new ideas and putting them out for people to try. But at the same time, you know, to address the most possible businesses in the most possible ways, there needs to be an easy to consume, stable, uh, reliable version of Hadoop. So that's where the you know one dollar line comes in. This is what's been tested, and that's where uh, distributions come in. So this week we've announced the HortonWorks data platform, um, which is a packaging of all the usual suspects from the Hadoop stack. You know, it's the Hadoop line, which I've been talking about, and also all the other projects, which are just as important. Um, I'll, let me double click on a couple of those details. So first of all, highlights. Um, it is a pure Apache Hadoop. It's based on the Apache Hadoop 1.0 code line. Very clean, not, no changes. Uh, it's 100% open source, 100%. No ifs, what's, or buts, and that's a differentiator. Right? We don't sell add-ons, components. We just distribute Hadoop. Uh, that's our brand promise, is that Hadoop at Hortonworks. Hadoop will be open source, Hadoop will be complete, Hadoop will be free. Um, it includes monitoring and management via um, Apache Ambari. It includes HCatalog, which is a way of taking the Hive table model and the Hive metadata model and generalizing that so you can use it with all your programming frameworks. We're very excited about the opportunities that opens up. It, inc it includes a new release of Talent Open Studio for Big Data, which is out under the Apache license. Um, and which supports integration of data in and out of Hadoop. 
and it includes the uh, time-tested capacity scheduler, which is how Yahoo manages to share those hundreds of those clusters among hundreds of users. So it has great multi-tenancy support. Um, and finally, it has full stack HA work, which allows you, oh, well, I'll double click on that in a minute. All right, so management and services. Um, so Ambari is a brand new Apache incubator project. Uh, it's included in our distribution. And it really sort of walks you through all the details of managing a Hadoop cluster. First of all, it has a simple installation and provisioning system. You can walk through the screen shown at the bottom, be uh, up and running with a Hadoop cluster in much, much, much reduced time. We've seen our install times go from hours to large numbers of minutes um, in, uh, during the development of this project. And then uh, monitoring, once you're up and running, uh, Ambari integrates time-tested open source tools for managing and monitoring your Hadoop uh, cluster. So you get Nagios for alerts, and you get Ganglia for the current status of all your services and nodes. Uh, exciting to have that out and evolving. Um, so then we have uh, the full stack HA work. And this is a, a really sort of interesting approach to the problem. It's a focus on adding open APIs to Apache Hadoop so that you can take proven HA clustering solutions and combine them with proven stable version of Hadoop. So uh, today, this week, we specifically announced that we have certified um, HTTP 1.0 working with VMware clusters. Um, that means that you can take your existing Hadoop cluster, put your, just your masters into a VMware HA environment, and you get um, a highly available solution. We're also going to continue to expand this. Right now it works on the name node and the job tracker, so your, job, your jobs aren't lost. They continue to run across events, um, be they in the job tracker or the name node. We're gonna continue to invest to bring that to all the Hadoop stack services and we're gonna to continue to invest to work with other HA vendors to provide you know, a large palette of solutions. Um, so the idea when, is that you can use the HA technology that you know and the Hadoop technology you know, put them together and have very stable HA solution. Um, this work is, let me just say that that work is very complementary with the work that's happening in 2.0, right? Those open APIs and approach to the full stack is going to work very nicely with the focus on always on that you see in 2.0. All right. Uh, finally, what are we thinking about at Hortonworks every day when we come into work right now? So the sort of key areas that we really expect to see progress on in the next six to 12 months that we're investing in um, are the enhancing in Bari, right? Obviously 2.0, 1.0, .0 are areas of intense focus. We've talked about those. Beyond those, there's in Bari, uh, Umbari is going to have a set of REST APIs, um, and it's going to integrate with a lot of uh, existing enterprise tools. We think it'll add a lot more value with those additions. H Catalog, there's a lot of ongoing work on ODBC, JDBC, right? We have, you know, having a really stable solution that's lightweight, that supports lots of concurrent access. A lot of work to do there, but we think we have a way forward there we're really excited about. Um, and more API, we got RESTful APIs coming on an H catalog, and that's gonna allow a lot of inter interesting third-party integrations where you can use new tools with your Hadoop tables, or you can use new stores with your Hadoop tools. So there's gonna be a talk on H catalog. I should pause and say there's talks in, pretty m in more detail on pretty much everything I've talked about today uh, from the architects to the various projects. I'd encourage you to go to the talks. And there's demos for all of the HTTP technologies I talked about, so I'd encourage you to go to the Dev Cafe or to our booth. So full stack HA, um, I mentioned we're investing further in that to do more integrations and to cover the full stack. And native Windows support is a really exciting uh, area of investment for us and for Microsoft. Right, by bringing Hadoop natively to Windows, we of course broaden the community, which is one of the things that we're all about. And we also bring the ecosystem of Windows tools uh, to Hadoop. That means access to Azure. That means all the analysts who use Excel today can, uh, will be able to use Excel and Hadoop together. That's, you know, obviously democratizes Hadoop quite a bit. Very exciting. All right, with that,
Um, hmm. Well, uh, interesting. Uh, welcome to the Hadoop Summit. <laughs> With that, let me welcome you to the Hadoop Summit. I'm going to push the button again. Um, I enjoy. <laughs> and it's all about the ecosystem. It's not just about, you know, the tools. It's about putting it all together. So let me challenge you to help grow the ecosystem.